What is the most hurtful thing someone said to you? Well you're just a little whore and probably wanted it, my older, 60s, foster parents after my sister and I told our case worker their older, 30s 40s, son had been sexually abusing both of us for one and a half years. I was 11, sis was 13. I had just had my first period days before we decided to tell, my big sister was terrified he'd go all the way with me, as I was small, still am, 36 years and 4 feet 10 inches, 100 pounds, and she was scared he'd get me pregnant since I now had periods. He was a big, burly and hairy man, that I remember used to make me vomit in my mouth when he held my body near his. His name was John Deo Sr. He since died a couple years ago, but they only gave him 7 years total, and I think he got out early. My daughter died at birth and I almost did too. My father told me that my stepmother was really taking it hard and feels like she doesn't have a purpose anymore slash nothing to live for because we had planned for her to babysit. She also asked me when I was hospitalized if she can have some of my daughter's ashes for herself. Keep in mind we were never close and I never even lived there. I was still extremely sick post birth and never got to go to the funeral home for arrangements so my dad did. He told me a few years later when I got a potter to make her an urn I hope you aren't getting rid of the one I picked out because I spent a lot of money on it my sister also thinks she had a miscarriage at some point very very early on when she was a teen and told me after I lost my daughter that she has been through worse. When my father looked at me and said he was glad I knew that I wasn't his, and he didn't have to be my DSD anymore. My mom was a slut plain and simple almost a habitual cheater. She had an affair with my dad's sister's husband, my non-bio uncle on my dad's side. If you line the stars up on paper, I was my uncle's kid. When I was a little kid, he was decent to me. When my sister was born seven years later, her shit didn't stink, and I had better not breathe wrong. When I told him, I knew the family's little secret. He was glad to be rid of me. He died six years later from a heart issue. Out of curiosity, I did a DNA test, and my sister did one too. Turns out I, in fact, was my father's son and my sister, was his best friend's kid. I've commented this before but someone once said to me slash about my wife that it sucks her dad died, last week of a sudden massive heart attack, but that doesn't give her an excuse for her behavior. The problem was, the statement was totally untrue. There was zero behavior. The person was literally just being a cold-hearted bitch because they took a disliking to my wife, who was only ever perfectly kind to the cold-hearted bitch. I excused a lot of shitty behavior toward myself and others from that pause but this was the last straw. To not even be able to fake a decent human interaction towards someone the very week their father dies a horrific, untimely death really speaks to the kind of garbage heap of a human I was dealing with. When I was getting divorced, we had a two-year-old. Tarrant County required a social worker. Towards the end, everything had been going great with both of us, and they had me come up there for the final evaluation. The social worker told me that I should sign over all my rights to the mom and just focus on finishing college and my career, that it would be in the best interest for the mom and child. She said there was nothing negative about me, but that's just the way it goes. As a 33-year man at the time, I cried so hard when I got back to my truck, and for a while, that was the lowest I ever felt in my life. I thought about taking my own life at that time because it felt like I didn't matter to anyone. I didn't end up listening to her after I was able to compose myself and really think about the situation. I was an Eagle Scout, putting myself through college, had been working a stable career for the past 10 years when we got divorced. To be blindsided by someone that didn't know me at all, but had so much power with the court system, I was just shocked. It wasn't even a messy divorce, we both agreed to the divorce that it would be best for both of us, and it was still a nightmare to deal with. Absolutely hated being looked down upon by everyone at the family court system there, so glad I'll never deal with that again. My mother looked me in the eyes, told me she was ashamed to say that I came out of her and called me the biggest waste of breath she has ever seen and told me the entire family would be better off if I followed in my older brothers, one of them, footsteps, and killed myself. I was a few months shy of turning 13. Want to know the grand sin that made my mother embarrassed to have birthed me? I had the sheer, unmitigated audacity to take an apple from the fruit basket because I hadn't eaten in three days and was starting to struggle to move around cause I was so lightheaded. Like Eve before me I faltered and committed the greatest sin of eating the forbidden fruit. 
literally lol. But oh well, I moved on and have a decent relationship with her now even though it's complicated because I'm her full-time caretaker and she hates that I'm in charge of when she takes her pain meds. Though I would like to say I've never even once been tempted to retaliate for my mistreatment as a kid by denying her her medication when she needs it or not taking care of her in other ways, I genuinely have moved on from the past and don't let it cloud my judgment now, and I've spoken with my fiancé and told her if she thinks for even a second I'm letting our history interfere with my mom's care to call me out on it immediately. I was in a later with someone who had four kids from a previous marriage. Dad wasn't in the picture. Ended up having two kids together. When COVID hit I worked from home. Our two kids were one and three even COVID hit. She kept working from office. I did everything at home. Cooked, cleaned, took care of the babies, took care of her older kids, yard work, all of it. I cooked dinner every night. She always came home angry. One night she told me that nobody there needed me for anything and there were 100 other guys lined up to be with her if I left. There were constant comments like this. Whenever I'd bring up any issues or my feelings she'd say if you don't like it you can leave, we don't need anything from you. It's crazy that someone would say things like that to their co-parent right in front of the kids. Made me feel pretty worthless. We separated last year. Long bitter custody battle. She ended up with supervised visitation for a while. I have primary physical custody and sole legal custody of our two joint children, now four and six. Three of her four children have since moved out of the house in the year that I moved out, two before they hit 18 one of whom was 15 after she ran away from her mom. Cops have been called to their home. I feel bad for her other kids. Looking back, I realized I brought stability to their lives. Unfortunately, I had to protect myself and my own children and have no rights to the her other children. I think about them often and pray they're all okay. My daughters full on attacked me verbally and went no contact. I never knew what the issue was and was heartbroken. I heard from parents of their friends how they were disparaging me. I was a pretty good parent with the usual flaws. I worked too much, was strict but not overly so, I made a lovely home, was available, listened to their woes and angst. Generally tried to do a decent job. Loved them to pieces. Paid for weddings which I worked a second job to afford. So when they came to our house together and berated me for all the things I missed, how horrible I was, how unfit I was as a parent and accused me of abuse I was shocked, and heartbroken. I never abused them, I rarely missed anything that they were involved in, and I always had their back. Needless to say they both went no contact. The cruelest thing said to me was by my closest friend of many years. I don't want to be involved. I felt so betrayed after holding her hand through all her issues. All I asked was an ear and a box of tissues. I was hit out in left field. Over the last 10 years my daughters have come around. Patience, kindness and holding my feelings at bay went a long way. My friend gets very little from me. But oh it hurt so badly to be dismissed when I truly needed a friend to hear me.